What's up, YouTube? Robbie Vapes, back again. And today, I got a new sweater to show off. Just kidding, we got a tank review, so stay tuned. That's right, YouTube. Today we are checking out the Yokozuna tank by Marstream. This is a more compact sub-ohm tank, and it does come with two sets of coils. One of them is the 0.3 ohm coil, which recommended wattage is between 20 and 50 watts. I will confirm I've taken it a little bit higher than that. I've got it up to 55, but anything more than 55, I do get a little bit of a burnt taste on it. So I would recommend in that 55 range or below if you are vaping on this tank. The second coil is a 0.8 ohm coil, and that one is recommended between 15 and 35 watts. Again, same thing, I've been able to take it up just about to 40 watts, but anything over 40 watts, I do think you're gonna get a burnt taste from, and just not recommended. There are a lot of pros to this tank, but there's also some downfalls as well. And the downfalls are pretty big in my books, and it depends on your preferences, of course, as well. The one biggest pro I want to mention first and up front is just the amount of density in the vapor when vaping around the 30 to 40 watt range. This is on the 0.3 ohm coil. I'm going to take a quick hit of this as I did in the beginning, and I'm just going to show you the type of density you're getting from this thing. And that's partially because the airflow is just slightly restrictive. I would compare it to a little bit more than a Petri Dot Mod RDA, so it's got that tighter draw on it, and uh, we'll get to flavor a little bit later on, but in the meantime, let's take a hit off this, and I'll show you what the density looks like. Pretty decent clouds, pretty decent clouds, guys. You're getting that nice, dense vapor. It's honestly a very fulfilling vape, if you are looking to vape under 50 watts but don't want to lose out on the density, that is one of the biggest pros in this device. The second one is, is of course that restrictive draw does add to the density of the vapor. Now I mentioned I'm going to skip flavor and that's because it actually is a con. Again, I'll get to that in just a moment, but let's finish off with the pros. The next pro is that this actually has a 510 drip tip, so you can use your standard size drip tips on this. Now moving on from there, the overall craftsmanship and appearance, I gotta say, this tank from everything from the actual craftsmanship of the tank to the packaging and the visual aesthetics of it was very eye-pleasing for me and I do like it. And part of that though is I wanted to like it so much more and I tried everything to give it a chance to be what I wanted it to be and it fell short for two reasons. So moving on to the cons, let's talk about the cons. First con I want to share with you is that it is bottom fill. That's right because it's bottom fill and not only is it bottom fill, if you want to fill it up to the top or maximize the capacity of the actual tank itself, there's a little screw in it. You have to unscrew the screw and then fill it in from there. And of course, it's a very narrow filling. So if you're using bigger bottles like I do, your best bet is to take it off completely. The problem with that is if you take it off completely to bottom fill, there's little vent holes that actually, they're more like juice holes that go into the coil actually. And what happens is they go a little bit further down. So you're cutting out about, I would say roughly maybe a fifth of the tank so you are losing on a little bit of juice capacity if you do opt to unscrew the bottom completely. Now that being said, that is actually not the biggest con despite it being 2016 and I really wish this thing was top fill. There is actually a bigger con. In fact, this con is what ruined it for me. Even with bottom fill, I would actually give this a great review and I'd swear by this tank, but there's one thing that I find that has issues and that is flavor. The flavor in this thing is very muted. I've been vaping on this for about a week now, maybe six days, give or take. And honestly, I was very disappointed in the flavor. I've been trying to break in this coil, thinking maybe I had a break in period. I've run probably 12 to 15 tanks of juice through it and the coil just will not break in. It feels like a very muted taste. To give you an idea on a flavor scale of 100% or 1% to 100%, I would honestly say this has about maybe less than 10% flavor. So it's a very, very subtle flavor to it. And that includes any juice I've tried in it. And I did give it a ton, a ton of chances because I really wanted this tank to be better than what it was. I actually tried 50-50 mixes. I tried Max VG mixes. I tried 70-30 mixes. I tried flavors that normally I would consider to be too strong and they were still muted in this tank. So if you are looking for a muted flavor and you just want something that has dense vapor, maybe this is for you. Especially if you don't mind the bottom fill, then you know that's who this is geared for. But if you want the flavor, like a lot of us do, and you don't want to do bottom fill, I think that that's where this tank falls short. So with that being said, let's get down and dirty with the Yokozuna by Marstream, and I'll give you a closer look at it. All right, YouTube, we are 
down and dirty with the Yokozuna tank by Marstream Japan. Like I said before, the packaging on this is actually very nice, very well done. There's a QR code right there. If any of you guys want to scan it, you're more than welcome to. Marstream.jp. Scratch and check to make sure your authenticity is correct. And of course, the actual packaging itself. So you have the user guide or slash instruction manual is right here in the top. And I guess it's, I don't want to call it a con, but it's really, really difficult to get out of here because it's pretty much fit in there perfectly. But uh, we'll look at that in just a moment. In the meantime, let's check out the rest of the packaging. You do have this really nice, kind of like a styrofoam type finish to here. And the tank sits nicely in there. It's got its own little piece carved out. And of course your spare coil, this is the 0.8 ohm coil, is just right in here. All right, so here's the user manual. Like I said before, it's a little bit difficult to get out of this top part. It just took me a couple minutes to get it out, but here we go. Tips on how to replace the new coil. Moving over, you have the juice fill option as if you wanted to use the screw port which again, I would only use if you have a small enough bottle. And then of course, here's how to fill the juice if you want to take off the entire bottom cap. And as it's, you can see here, you will want to stop when it does actually hit the bottom line of those three lines of the juice well or the, uh, the juice flow. Moving on to the back, we have the specifications. It is 22 millimeters in diameter, 52.7 millimeters tall, and it weighs 52 grams with a fill capacity of 2.5 milliliters. The coil is a bottom vertical coil. Moving on from here, this is what the tank looks like taken apart. And the kit contains one Yokozuna sub-ohm tank, one pre-installed coil, the 0.8 ohm, one replacement coil, the 0.3 ohm, and here are the resistances and the recommended wattages, 15 to 35 watts on the 0.8 ohm, and of course, 20 to 50 watts on the 0.3. Like I said, if you wanted to, you could probably squeeze an extra five watts out of that, but I wouldn't do much more than that. Also included is this user manual. And of course, a little piece by Yokozuna. By all means, if you want to read it, you can pause it right now. All right, before moving on to the tank, let's take a quick look at the coil itself. Like I said, this is the 0.8 ohm, and these are both Canthal coils. So I just want to stress that the juice holes are actually pretty decent. They're not bad at all. And I think what's causing the flavor issue, and there might be a few things, is this little, if you can see this little metal cylindrical piece above the cotton, kind of like what we've seen in other coils before. And I think that might be contributing to it. But I think ultimately it's a combination of this, and I believe it's actually the cotton they're using in here. And I think if you change out the cotton, you would get much better flavor. And that's just my recommendation. If you guys are watching this Yokozuna, that's what I recommend. Change out the cotton, try and play around with it a little bit more, and get that flavor up. Because if you can do that and make it top fill, this is easily one of my top picks for a lower wattage tank. So, there's the coil. Let's move on to the tank. Alright guys, here is the tank itself. As we can see here, we agreed with the Yokozuna logo at the bottom. And again, the craftsmanship on this, the way it's been designed, it does feel like a high quality tank. The drip tip that's included is a bit of a wider bore drip tip. It's pretty wide, although I actually preferred to switch it out for this one, my Otis drip tip. And I found that I got a little bit better flavor using this drip tip than this one. I don't know why that was, but just something to note. Also, if you look at the rest of the tank, we can see here, these are the three holes I mentioned earlier. And again, that top one, the smallest one, is where you're going to fill up to if it's upside down. So you can see how much room you lose in that tank by taking this entire piece off to fill it. Moving on to the bottom of this tank, we can see here this is our 510 connection pin. We can see it does protrude a little bit. However, as I've mentioned before, I do not recommend using any tanks on a hybrid style mech mod. Just my personal opinion though, guys. Moving on from there, we do have a screw hole for where you're going to fill it. We will be trying to fill it up through that screw hole later on in the video. But before that, let's take a look at the rest of this tank. So we've already talked about the drip tip, we've talked about the glass itself, and that reminds me, if you look at the packaging, this is all it comes with. There is no spare glass or accessories. This is what you get. So be prepared. If you do break glass a lot, this might be another con for you guys. Now for me, it's not, but for some of you guys out there, it could be. Anyways, back to the tank itself. Let's take a look at these airflow holes. Like I said, they are quite small, but it does add to a really nice restrictive draw, which of course then adds to a much more denser vape. And we do have a little stopper there as well, which I love seeing that on devices. So you're not sitting there spinning it around over and over again when you do want to take off the bottom. All right, speaking of removing the bottom, here we go. The bottom has now been removed. First thing I want to focus on is the chimney itself. If we look inside that chimney, you can see that little silver plate up there, just inside there. Hopefully you guys can see that. That is actually meant to be for spitback protection. And I will admit it does work pretty well, but I can't help but wonder if that's maybe adding to the loss of flavor in this device. Moving around here again, we've already seen pretty much everything in here. The O-rings are fairly tight, which I do like about this tank. And of course, moving on to the bottom, we can see that right down there. If you look just in that little hole there, that's actually where it leads from the fill hole down here. So you can see it is ext 
extremely small. In fact, it's so small, I just did a quick test when I took this off, and there is no way in hell I'm getting that spout to fit in there. Just no way. So again, we'll have to fill it out from the bottom like I have been doing, which is unfortunate, uh, but again, just something to keep in mind. Let's see if I can get the camera to refocus there. Moving on to the coil itself, we've already taken a look at the 0.8 ohm, this is the 0.3 ohm coil here. And again, we look inside, it's a little bit hard to tell, we can see the coil inside there, and again, we have that metal lip around the cotton, which I think is also contributing to flavor loss. Uh, apart from that, that's pretty much the device itself. What do you say we give it a quick fill, then we'll take a back up top and finish the review off. All right, so it is now filled up and ready to go. Let's take it back up top. One quick thing to note is that it does appear to be leaking out of the drip tip for some reason. I'm not sure if that's extra juice from vaping somewhere or if that's maybe the chamber I showed you with the spit back kind of releasing itself or something, but we can see there is juice right down here, which is not a good sign. I don't know if that's leaking out from wherever, but again, just something to note that it could end up leaking on you if you are filling it up and just be cautious of that. In fact, it's coming out pretty heavily right now, so we can see on my fingers right now. But anyways, let's go back up top and finish this review off. All right, now that I've cleaned off the table, let's talk about my final verdict. First of all, who do I recommend this tank for? There's only really one vaping style I can really see who would want this tank, and that is kind of a bit of a niche as well. The person who's gonna want this is gonna wanna have a very dense cloud at a low wattage, so if you're stuck with a low power device but you wanna blow denser clouds, this is gonna be a great option. Secondly, you also must not care too much about flavor or if you use a very strong juice and you're always complaining about too much flavor, and there's very few people out there who I can see being that way, but there are some of you, then this is a great option to tone down the flavor on it. Now lastly, of course, I will touch base on the density again. I know I've touched base on this a lot of times, but I need to justify this to you guys because this was the most impressive feature of this tank and of a lot of tanks I've reviewed. This is giving me the same amount of fulfillment density-wise as my ZPAL Coral Tank at 130 watts. So to give you an example, at 130 watts versus 35 to 40 watts, this is almost comparable in the density department. Sure, you're not blowing as big of clouds, but the clouds you are blowing are really dense and they're nice and fluffy too. But again, the flavor killed me on this. I'd love to see a V2, even if all they did was change the coil out a little bit to give it more flavor, I would be okay with the bottom fill aspect. I'd actually use this tank a ton if they just had better coils for it. Now, of course, if they did a V2, I'd love to see a top fill aspect as well. And I think they're so close to making a great product, but it fell just a little bit short because of those two downfalls, the bottom fill and the, the flavor itself. Next, the big question is, do I recommend it? Would I go out and buy another one of these? Honestly, unless they change those two things for me, just those two things, not having spare glass is fine by me. Not having extra O-rings, Fine by me. To be honest, I have a bucket of O-rings right now because I never have to change mine on any of my devices. I have all these spare O-rings kicking around. I don't really need them. And if it means saving a couple bucks on cost, I'm all for it. But again, if it just I wish it had the top fill and I really, really wish it had better flavor coming from it. I tried my hardest to try and break this coil in. I put a ton of tanks through the coil and it just would not improve on the flavor. So if they can improve those two things, I think they have a winner here. But until then, for me personally, I cannot go out and buy another one of these until those two issues are addressed. Anyways, that ends the video here. Thank you all for watching. And of course, as always, YouTube, happy vaping.